So the massive AI news this week is that Meta and Microsoft are joining forces to make Meta's open source AI Llama 2 available via Microsoft. And Llama 2 is massive. So let's check it out. As you can see here, Meta and Microsoft introduced the next generation of Llama, Llama 2. And we're going to be testing out Llama 2 as well. So I'm going to show you a demonstration of what Llama 2 is like. But here are the main takeaways. Today, we're introducing the availability of Llama 2, the next generation of our open source large language model. Now, of course, the difference between Llama 2 and OpenAI is that OpenAI is not open source where Meta is all about making their AI models and stuff like Llama 2 and all of that open source, which is a very interesting approach. But I think it's their way of trying to steal a march on open AI. Llama 2 is free for research and commercial use. So this is going to be very much about companies using the Llama 2 and creating APIs and stuff that work with Llama 2 rather than it being kind of like a chat GPT just available to you and me. But as I said, stay tuned because I will be showing you a demonstration of Llama 2. Microsoft and Meta are expanding their long-standing partnership with Microsoft as preferred partner. This is very interesting as the preferred partner for Llama 2. I mean, where does this leave Google? Microsoft now in bed with OpenAI and now with an equally large language model, Llama 2. We're opening access to Llama 2 with the support of a broad set of companies and people across tech, academia, and policy who also believe in open innovation approach to today's AI technologies. Microsoft love AI, and they are trying to be the dominant platform, like the, the next windows of AI, if you like. We're committed to building responsibly and are providing resources to help those who use Llama 2 to do so. And then there's a whole article down there. I'll leave a link down below. So what is Llama 2? So you can see here from Meta AI introducing Llama 2, the next generation of our open source large language model available for free and research and commercial uses. And now, of course, partnering with Microsoft. Llama 2 was trained on 40% more data than Llama 1 and has double the context length. Comes in these different parameters, 7 billion parameter, 13 billion parameter, and 70 billion parameter. Llama 2 pre-trained models are trained on 2 trillion tokens and have double the context length than Llama 1. Its fine-tuned models have been trained over 1 million human annotations. Wow. And then there's some be uh, benchmarks here. It tends to do pretty well. Not, it's not across the board. Not quite there with Falcon on some stuff. Oh, I see. Yeah. So the 70 billion one, though, uh, does significantly better than most of the other uh, versions, which kind of, you know, makes sense. Anyway, so there you go. That's what Llama 2 is all about. I guess we just want to test it out. So I'm over here on Llama.perplexity. AI. Since Llama 2 is open source, Perplexity have created this kind of open AI available to you and I interaction with Llama. So you can have a go at Llama chat. They call it basic Llama chat. So GPT chat is Llama chat. And you see down here, they're using the Llama 2 7 billion parameter to chat. Okay, so I've already done a little poem here, which is quite interesting. And as you'll see the speed, it's crazy. Write me a poem in the style of Dr. Seuss about a man who works from home. And straight away, I quite like the way that they responded. It went straight in with a poem, not, not for what I asked, but introducing what it's about to do. Oh my, oh me, I see what you want to be. A poem all snazzy and bright about a man who works from home with delight. Let me put my thinking cap on. I'll give it a go with a hop and a clap. So it, it kind of answered in a kind of jokey way. And then, in, so it answered in a poetic way because I'd ask it to do a poem saying what it's going to do. And then it gave me the poem. In his little cosy house where he spends most of his days, he sits at his desk with a grin on his face, tapping away on his computer with glee and with grace. His work flows like a breeze through the digital space. 
No need for a commute, no crowded train to abide, just him and his screen and the tasks he must divide. With coffee by his side and maybe some treats too, he tackles each task with ease and finishes them before they can brew. Oh, how grand it is, the life of remote work he leads, where productivity soars high without any dreads. Leads. Leads and dreads. That doesn't rhyme. So here's to our hero working from home with cheer. May his day be filled with joy and nothing to fear. So there you go. Um, Let's have a look at ChatGPT. Let's ask the same question. Sounds more like a nonsense poem. Like a Spike Milligan nonsense poem here. In the land of Plink in the city of Nome lives a happy-go-lucky man who works from home. His name is Tim and he's quite a sight, working and typing with all his might. In pyjamas of blue and slippers of red, he sits down to work on his comfy bed. No commute, no rush, no traffic to beat. Just him and his laptop. Oh, what a treat. I won't read the whole poem, but you get the idea. And it's much longer. The kitchen is close, just a hop and a skip. With a coffee in hand, he's ready to flip. From spreadsheets to reports in a single bound. Oh, the joys of working with no one around. Oh, the places you'll go. Little Dr. Seuss reference there. Oh, the places you'll go. One of a great, a great book. Book slash poem by Dr. Zeus. Oh, the places you'll go, Tim often thinks. From the bedroom to the living room, never missing a blink. All in a day's work, no need to roam. For our dear friend Tim, who works from home. And when the day is over, he closes his laptop tight. Gives his cat a pet and switches off the light. He loves his life, feels like a poem. In the land of Plink, for the man who works from home. Feels like a poem and home. Po- no, I'm not sure about that rhyme. But a bit longer... What's the, do I like the, the rhythm of it, the structure of it? Not bad. What about Claude? This one I asked seven days ago. A bit shorter, as you can see here. Oh, the jobs people can do from their house. It's quite wondrous, no need to go out. Take that man, he's a whiz on the keys, typing and clicking with great ease. He wakes up each day and he logs on. His compute, his commute, just a walk to his John. In sweatpants and slippers he's dressed. No need to impress, he's at home to rest. So whether in the office or at home you work, as long as you do it, no need to shirk. The wear doesn't matter when duties are done. They'll lead to success and also some fun. Now, this one's a bit shorter, but I feel rhythmically it's much more in line with a Dr. Seuss. But anyway, there you go. That's just an example. But let's just check out the speed of this. Let's ask it a question. Write me a summary on the Japanese bit of... Ikigai. You see that? Inst- wow. You see the speed? I mean, the speed. So if you are enterprise or a company looking to use and employ this large language model in one of your apps or, you know, supporting your company or whatever, then speed's really important. Speed of response. And you could see there, I've not cut that. That was no cut there. That was like, Boom. Ikigai is a concept in Japanese philosophy that roughly translates as a reason for being or purpose in life. It refers to the idea that every person has a unique purpose or passion that drives their actions and gives meaning to their lives. The pursuit of one's ikigai is believed to bring fulfillment, happiness and a sense of direction in life. So there you go. It seems everything all right. It's beautifully laid out. But the speed its the speed. I think ultimately in terms of creativity, I think ChatGPT4 still edges things slightly, although Claude is giving me amazing results. But there's no denying the speed of uh, Llama. And which is to say, if you are an enterprise company or you're wanting to use Llama in the clouds, if you want to develop your applications or your company that want to use a large language model, speed's super important. And as you can see, that's really cool. Uh, let's try something else. Let's try a, a fitness kind of thing. I'm interested in building muscle in arms and chest. Let's elaborate it, make it longer. I only have a set of dumbbells. I want a uh, uh, around 15 minutes. Put together a weekly plan with rest days for certain muscle sets and include a simple warm up before each session. Okay, so quite, quite long. I don't like the way that the 
text just goes across there, but that's just the way that uh, perplexity is set up. Okay, let's see what happens here. So it's a bit more complex, but see, look, the speed there, I've not edited that at all, is coming there straight, well, straight away. Look at that, really comprehensive, that's not bad. So here we go, we've got a five day, seven days, so a whole week, rest day, give your muscles an extra day to recover, Russian twists, perfect. There's no quick uh, sort of copy thing on this perplexity version of Llama, but that's pretty impressive. So you've got warm up, warm up there as asked, dumbbell bench press, I don't have a bench press, I suppose it's the, yeah. Pullovers, incline, I don't have, I should have said, see, okay. I don't have a bench, so I'll have to use the floor instead of bench presses. Please rewrite. Right, ready? I'm gonna hit the button, okay? Three, two, one, go. Pile of books, incline dumbbell press using an incline bench or a pile of box using a chair or bench. Okay, so it's introduced a chair. I'll give it that. Using a floor or incline bench. So it's, give, it's just it's swapped round saying using a floor or incline bench. But there we go. But it's the speed. It's blistering. Blistering speed. Really, really good. I really like that. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, a really quick look at Llama 2 because there's a lot of fuss around it at the moment because of this partnership that Meta is entering into with Microsoft to make Llama 2, the massive open source AI LLM available to Microsoft Azure uh, members and stuff like that. But you can try it out right now using Perplexity AI. Uh, which is Perplexity Labs AI. Here we are, llama.perplexityai. Uh, I thought I'd just give you a little demonstration. It's another great AI tool. Again, it's free at the moment until they stop me from using it. The same with Claude. And uh, I'm finding Claude really, really good as well, really, really valuable. And sometimes I jump between the different AI models, depending on what exactly I'm looking for, for slightly more creativity or more depth. Sometimes I veer towards ChatGPT4 and I've written a book recently. I say I've written a book with the help of AI, but I sort of swapped between Claude and GPT4. So I started on Claude and then I got GPT4 to kind of improve it and build on it and stuff like that. There you go. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it useful. If you did, then please hit the likes because I like it. YouTube likes it and it helps people like you find content like this. And if you are new here, then do me the great honor. All right, gotta go Hit that subscribe button, just the one down there, yeah? Um, it would mean a lot to me. It helps with the self-esteem plus the channel, of course. And don't forget to toggle the notification bell and that way you'll know when I publish videos just like this. And talking of videos just like this, why don't you check out these videos over here in the little boxes over here? Thanks. These ones here.